finished now. And uh, like I said, usually when I'm making these videos, things get a little strange because it's hard to record the entire process when it takes so long to do. And uh, at some point while I'm doing all kinds of other things, I kind of tend to lose track. So let me see if I can get you back up to speed. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize for the aspect ratio. Uh, where I'm at is not really conducive to getting the wide shot that is the best aspect ratio for YouTube. <sighs> With the season changing, I'm going to take the air conditioner unit out of the window and rearrange the room. So that may or may not make things better. We'll see how it goes. All right. So I think when you last saw me, I was doing the pleating for the underskirt. And I had sewn the outer gown all together and it just needed the finishing touches. And that's for uh, both of the gowns. I'm only going to show you Elizabeth's gown because the other gown, I think, is going to be for Felicity for Christmas. So you won't see it in this video, but you'll probably see pictures of it in the historical doll groups and Instagram and Facebook, maybe. All right, so let me walk you through this. Here is the outer gown. And basically, uh, I did everything but stitched down this part of the gown, just kind of got tired. But I put the hem tape on this one instead of zigzagging it on the machine, which is what I would normally do. And that's because after a while you do get gown fatigue. Uh, here are the sleeves. I really like how that turned out nicely. And I did top stitch all the way around the uh, top of the bodice. I didn't add the ruffles. I totally forgot about that. No, I'll probably go back and do that later. Here we are at the back. You know what? It only occurred to me during this gown that I did not do the stitching well enough to make sure that you could see the point in the back of the gown. Because when you look at English gowns, and I want to say with the round gowns too, with the sack backs, you can't tell because it's a sack back. But you can always see that really nice V, that peak at the back of the gown. It's a, it's a feature of the gown. And it is included in Felicity's patterns. It's just that when I did my stitching, I didn't really take the time to stitch it so it would show nicely. So I have to keep that into consideration. I only noticed it as I was putting the two of them together. And I was like, oh, I should have made that more pointed. But that turned out really nicely. I did not line the bottom of this one but i did as you can see line the inside this is all lined here so that i did do the top of the bodice is lined the uh, over skirt is not lined however for felicity's gown with that brocade i did line all of it okay so here is the underskirt Here's how the underskirt works. Um, this is the front and this is the back so that I would have a contrasting fabric in the front, which is also the fabric I did for her shoes. And that contrasting blue is only inside of the shoe. And I know with American Girl, you're used to seeing that plain white shoe. But if you look at historical pictures of shoes for that time period, there are a lot of brocade pattern fabric shoes so it still it works okay so we have this here we have this for the back side and it was historical to use your really fancy fabric in the front where it would be seen and use something not so fancy in the back where it would not be seen because fabric was at a premium even for people who had like, decent incomes also what i did is this is reversible Okay, so the lining on the other side, and I remember to do this, Marissa, I didn't remember to do this for uh, Felicity's first gown. I turned it inside out, or oh, we got a little string there, so that when you, when you turn it inside out, you can see that the casing is completely enclosed inside of the underskirt. 
so that I can actually reverse this. So it is reversible, the blue again, and then the reversible light blue. So you still get that two gown effect. Okay, the slits for the pockets. So here we go with the historical dressing again. Honestly, that those watch people dress videos are some of my favorite videos to watch. They just really are. So what we have on here is she has on her stockings tied with the garters. And of course her shoes on. Here is her one petticoat. I'm only putting one petticoat on her. And this is not a fancy petticoat. I will make her a fancy petticoat. And I'm thinking about using, oh, who is it? I think, is it Swish and Swirl? I'm not sure if it's Swish and Swirl or whether it's um, Thimbles and Acorns. It has an 18th century uh, garment, undergarment pattern. And there are the stays, which I need to make and the uh, petticoat. So at some point I'll make a really nice petticoat for her, but this is just a regular petticoat. And the poor thing isn't even him. She only, she's only gonna get one petticoat. And that is because the underskirt is doubled. So it'll come up pretty thick. So we got her petticoat on over her chemise, over her corset, and here are the pockets. I made these pockets some time ago. So instead of making new pockets out of this fabric, I just went ahead and used this pocket here. that will be perfectly fine for now. She already has her cap on. Uh, she has her hat right here. So her and Felicity, of course, will have matching hats. I'm going to take the hat off for a moment so that I can put her underskirt on. the underskirt I'm really loving this turntable I saw a turntable uh, I think it was AG Jitters she had a turntable when she did her work the dolls are wearing for January of 2020 you can see the pockets right here and I thought that would be so much easier to dress the doll if I had a turntable then I wouldn't have to pick her up off screen and more importantly it wouldn't have to be seen in the picture and I don't want anybody to think like I just can't stand myself so much I don't want to be seen it's just that I make these videos like all times a day all times a night and so uh, sometimes I'm like wearing pajamas <laughs> so I don't necessarily want to be seen in all of the pictures Okay, so here we go. She's got that on, and I can put her, well, hmm. at any rate, put her hat back on. The blue ribbon that fell off is a blue ribbon that matches uh, Be Forever Felicity's outfit, because these, these are the Be Forever Felicity hats. And so uh, it doesn't really match what she's wearing. I need to find what I did with the ribbon that is on the pocket that ribbon matches. So we slide her gown on. Uh, yeah, this gown could have used the pressing. And I, I meant to press it. I got my handy dandy tailor's board to press. And just kind of forgot. Started making a video. But it would be nice and crisp. Okay. Here we go. She needs either her fish shoe or a ruffle. And I will take care of that some point so let's just pretend she has the fish shoe or you know what there we go that'll work <laughs> all right now i actually made some pins for her i think i no, they're here and what i did was took the really short oh now you can see that sort of the really short uh, tailor pins that I have, quilt pins. I don't know if you can see that well. And I put beads on them so that they would have a better head on them. 
it's much easier to work with them. Let me see. This little tiny guy actually has a head on it. Yeah, you can see that. This one is just a flat head. And so I put the little beads on them so they would be easier to work with. just going to stick that in there now remember how I told you that the corset protects uh, the human from the pins that are placed in the front of the gown well it's the same deal with the doll so I have to get the pins in the right place so that I can actually put them through into the clothing and I won't be hindered by the corset which is boned okay so here we have it. This is Miss Elizabeth. And she looks really good. Might still have to do a few, a few finishing touches. There's some things that you notice once the doll has the gown on, like a few strings here and there that need to be clipped. But basically, uh, here she is. I think she looks pretty great. All right, if you have any questions about the gown construction or any other questions or request for uh, patterns or videos, please let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching and have a great day.